Last time, we talked about the 10 Pokemon that barely avoided being in this top 10 least favorite Pokemon list. If you missed that video, click the annotation on the screen right now. Who knows, maybe a Pokemon you thought should have been in this video will appear over there instead. For everyone else, let's cap off this top 20 in celebration of Pokemon's 20th anniversary. The rules for this list are the same as last time. This isn't about what Pokemon are statistically the worst or the Pokemon that are in the lowest competitive tier. This is just about the Pokemon we personally dislike the most for the reasons that we dislike them. Other than that, we've got free reign and everything is eligible. So, hey, I'm Asinio Tran, and these are our top 10 least favorite Pokemon. Ten. Diglett is my personal least favorite Pokemon, by a mile. I hate this Pokemon so much that I'm gonna have a mini list within this countdown as to why I hate it so much. One, it's absolutely annoying in the cartoon episode when it debuts. Two, its best stat is speed, which barely puts it in the top 200 fastest Pokemon, being outclassed by Pokemon such as Love Disk, Basculin, and Raticate. Three, it has the lowest base HP out of any Pokemon, excluding the gimmicked 1 HP Shedinja, the lowest defense out of any ground type Pokemon, and some of the most nonsensical moves in the entire series, because you can't see its limbs, but it can use fucking scratch attack. 4. Its locations in the games are limited to three places. First, in Diglett's Cave, in every single main series game up until Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Second, because in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you can find it on Route 48, where it's incredibly hard to find. And third, in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, you can find it on the Fiery Path, but only after you capture Groudon or Kyogre, and even then it's only as hidden Pokemon, so you have to use the Pokemon to find the damn thing, meaning that this incredibly annoying Pokemon is difficult to find everywhere except for the stupid cave and council reason where it's named out of the fucking things. 5. It looks fucking stupid. And you know what's just as bad, if not worse, than a Diglett? Three Diglett. Doug Trio is just three fucking Diglett friends with no concept of personal space. Either that or it's a three-headed Chimera Diglett, which is extra stupid. People like to say that the first generation of Pokemon was the best, but when you see these lazy ideas like Doug Trio, Magneton, and Dodrio, you can see why a cogent argument can be made against the idea of Generation 1 being the best. The only reason this isn't at the top of the list is because everybody else dislikes them to a lesser degree than I do. So, is it Diglett or Doug Trio at number 10? I don't know. Fuck them both. They're both number 10 because I hate them both equally. 9. No one needs a Pokemon based on Playboy bunnies. Stop that. Stop it right now. 8. Every generation of Pokemon has an HM Slave, which is a Pokemon that people use solely to store away hidden machine moves. Well, in Pokemon Gold and Silver, that HM Slave that was introduced ended up being one of the most difficult HM Slave Pokemon in the entire series. Smeargle. Now I know what you're thinking, you don't have to use it as an HM Slave, but let's be honest here, that Pokemon sucks anyways, you might as well try and use it for an HM Slave. And with other HM Slaves, you put it in your party, you battle a Pokemon in the game that both knows an HM move and isn't in the Battle Tower, the Battle Frontier, or a Link Battle, you hope they use the HM move on Smeargle, you use Sketch which permanently copies the previous move, you hope it works immediately because you only have one shot at it before Smeargle has to start using Struggle, and then you have one HM move on Smeargle. Repeat this every 10 levels after level 1, so level 11, 21, 31, etc, etc, until you have 4 HM moves on Smeargle. It's such a hassle to do! Couple that with the fact that Smeargle has the lowest base stat out of any Pokemon that doesn't evolve, the fact that Smeargle does not naturally learn any move except for Sketch, and the fact that Smeargle cannot directly learn any moves from TMs or HMs, breeding, or move tutoring, and you have a Pokemon that's more of a hassle than it's worth. 7. Diggers B is a fat rabbit with fists on its ears. That is a stupid design. It's not like an evolutionary detriment as I can think of many instances where hands on ears can be useful. It's just dumb. Remember that Family Guy episode where Stewie and Brian travel through dimensions and in one of the dimensions Stewie has a pig with fists instead of front feet as a joke? Or that Family Guy episode where they invented the joke wherein Chuck Norris has a third fist in his beard instead of a chin? See, those were jokes. Diggersby, for all intents and purposes, is a straight-faced Pokemon design and it's one of the most laughable designs throughout the whole series. I swear, it's Pokedex Entry should say, Diggersby, the Family Guy joke Pokemon, and the evolved form of Bunnelby. It looks fucking stupid, and that's why it's number 7 on this list.
Six. To us, Lick a Tongue is like the Adam Sandler movie Pixels. At no point of its existence did I ever think, I can't wait for the sequel. And yet, Licky Licky still exists. Why do you do this to me, Pokemon? It's not even a clever Pokemon. It looks dumb, its name is dumb, it's evolutionarily less equipped to survive given its larger mass and shorter tongue. And it looks dumb! I know I said it looks dumb twice, but look at it! Fuck! Five. Let's humor the people over at Game Freak and try to qualify Clef Key's design as reasonable using the most time-tested method ever. The scientific method. Question, how did Clef Key end up looking the way it does now? Hypothesis, some lazy person saw a key ring and decided to make it a Pokemon. Research and experimentation. The original metal key was invented somewhere around the year 900. That means Clef Key, being an aluminum looking Pokemon that likely had to live alongside humans to evolve into a human tool design, is about 1100 years old, give or take. If we take it back to Egyptian times, which is where some of the oldest keys on record are from, that makes it about 4,000 years old. That sounds like a long time, but take a look at dogs, a real-life species that lives alongside humans. They first diverged from their wild counterparts 40,000 years ago, and still look very much like their wild counterparts. Using that parallel, we can deduce that Klefki had to look like a keyring before it turned into its current design. In China, wildcats began domesticating around 5500 BCE, which is 7500 years ago. And again, they look like their feral counterparts. Everywhere you look, the timescale for Klefki's evolution into a keyring does not match real-world evolutionary timescales. Conclusion, Klefki is fucking stupid. Four. Fuck Tana Cool! It's annoying! It's everywhere! I hate it! Ah! Three. Everybody rags on Magikarp for sucking so spectacularly, but at the very least, if you want to catch a Magikarp, you can catch one just about anywhere. Feebas, on the other hand, is annoying to catch, because in Generation 3's Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and Generation 4's Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, Feebas is in a specific pool of water that either changes every day, or according to specific circumstances in the game, meaning there's a very low likelihood that you're gonna find the damn thing. And I know there are people out there who will say, oh, those are easy to find, but for the average player, trying to find a Feebas is a nightmare. Sure, Feebas learns some TM, HM, and Egg moves, but Feebas has equally low stats when compared to Magikarp, meaning it's just as weak even with those fancy new moves. Feebas' special attack is the lowest of any Pokemon ever, including baby Pokemon, and its evolutionary process is stupid and convoluted at worst, and inconvenient at best. With Magikarp, you level it up, and it evolves into Gyarados, a kick-ass dual water-flying type Pokemon that isn't anything to mess with. With Feebas, you either raise its beauty rank for contests in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, or you trade it to someone while it's holding a Prism Scale. Ultimately, Feebas is a stupid gimmick Pokemon, and Magikarp was always better. Two. Speaking of stupid gimmick Pokemon, here we have Unknown! What's its gimmick, you ask? It's a bunch of fucking letters! Ever heard of Alphabet Soup? It's fucking that, but Pokemon! Yeah! You'll love it, cause it's Pokemon! It wouldn't even be so bad if Unknown was a good Pokemon individually, but they only learn one move, which in and of itself is a gimmick move based on the Pokemon's nature. It's dumb, it's worthless, and it's honestly the first time I ever looked at Pokemon and saw it as a hugely marketed series that wouldn't stop until it sucked out all of my money. But much like Unknown stopped just short of making me quit Pokemon, it also couldn't quite grab the number one spot on this list. All right, before we top off this 20 for 20, let's hit the recap. Number 10, Diglett and Dugdrio. Number 9, Lopany. Number 8, Smeargle. Number 7, Diggersby. Number 6, Licky Licky. Number 5, Klefki. Number 4, ah! Number 3, Feebas. And number 2, Unknown. So after 20 years and 721 official entries in the Pokedex, what Pokemon could possibly top this list? 
It can't just be a combination of poor design, annoying encounters, evolutionary nonsense, and inconvenience. It has to be one of the most annoying, one of the most inconvenient, one of the most nonsensical, and one of the most poorly designed. With such a difficult decision to make, we knew we couldn't screw up, so we sat down and thought about it really long and hard for many days and nights. It's Zubat. Zubat was the original annoying encounter Pokemon. It showed up everywhere, its evolution into Golbat and eventually Crobat using friendship was inconvenient and gimmicky, the fact that it has no eyes or feet makes no sense, the fact that Golbat gains eyes and feet makes no sense, and the fact that Crobat gains two extra wings by turning its feet into wings makes no sense because how does it fucking rest? To top all that off, Zubat actually only got one move for which it received the same type attack bonus in Generation 1 and 2. It wasn't until Generation 3 when Zubat was able to learn Air Cutter, Poison Fang, Sludge Bomb, and Aerial Ace. Which means in the first two generations of Pokemon, Zubat was basically a useless waste of space. We're sure everyone saw this coming, but the choice was obvious from the start. Zubat is our least favorite Pokemon of all time. Bar none. And did you know? Clicking the subscribe button will repel any and all annoying Pokemon that you don't want to encounter. You should give it a shot. Checking out our 20 through 11 least favorite Pokemon video might help as well. If you're not feeling that, then you can always check out our top 20 favorite Pokemon videos or our top 5 Pokemon protagonists. Finally, let us know in the comments below how terrible and mean we are for including any and all of these Pokemon on our lists. Thanks for watching! Four, its location in the games are limited to three places. First, in Diglett's Cave in every main series game up until Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Second, because Heart Gold and Soul Silver you can find it on Route 48 where it's incredibly hard to find. And third, in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire you can catch it on the fiery path. <sighs> Let's start that one over. I ran out of breath. First, in Diglett's Cave after every single main series game. <sighs> First, in Diglett's Cave, in every single main series game up until Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Second, because in Heart Gold and Soul Silver you can find it on Route 48 where it's incredibly hard to find. And third, in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire you can catch it on the Fiery Path, but only after you capture Groudon and Kyogre. And even then, it's only as a hidden Pokemon. <sighs> Damn it. I don't have the breath for this one. First, in Diglett's Cave, where in every. Fuck me! You motherfucker! <laughs> It showed up everywhere, its evolution into Golbat and eventually Crobat using friendship was inconvenient and gimmicky, the fact that it had no eyes or feet makes no sense, the fact that Golbat gains eyes and feet makes no sense, the fact that Crobat- FUCK! 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 So close!